In this episode of the Your Mate Tom podcast, I speak with Uber Boyo. And this is the second time he's come on the podcast. And as usual, we have a very deep, amazing chat. This time around, we delve into Carl Jung's Ion, the end times, dissolving the collective Western ego, Christianity, Terence McKenna, psychedelia, where we're at now, left brain versus right brain. And if you want to know the timestamps, of course, that's all in the description box below. If you're listening on YouTube, we're also available on Spotify and iTunes. I very much appreciate a five-star review. Help us rise the ranks. And of course, I'd love to send some love to our patrons who really, without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So much love. Thank you for the support. And if you guys wanted to support this show, want to see more podcasts, documentaries, and help us increase the production, then you can go to patreon.com slash yourmatetom. You also get some really cool exclusive perks, one of which is access to a Patreon-exclusive podcast with me and my girlfriend, where we have really uncut, raw discussions. It's called The Tom and Yesenia Dimension, and it's awesome. There's already two episodes out now, and we will be releasing two episodes per month. That's a gift from us to you, and if you wanted to find other ways to support our channel, there's also merch and... Bitcoin donations. We're also accepting that. All the links are in the description box below. Hope you guys have a lovely Christmas and yeah, man, enjoy your day, enjoy your year, and prepare for 2021. Catch you guys. Much love. Peace. Well, the focus that I want to kind of stay on is more the where we are as a collective because I think right now there's a lot of chaos and there's a lot of despair <laughs> and I think it would be good to get some shine a light on it you know and from okay. what I from what I understand Carl Jung kind of prophesized this what was going to happen right uh, it's it, well we can definitely talk about this if you wish we can definitely talk, go down that direction if you wish um let me let me kind of chew in it for a second and yeah, I'll yeah. try to think of how I could put it all together and frame it so oh good oh good um and Christ, of course, because you talked about the Antichrist, kind of, that that was the end times, right? Because I haven't read Iron. Yeah, every, I've... every time I'm going to, like, purchase an, a Carl Jung book on Amazon, it's like a hundred bucks. I'm like, oh, man, that's ridiculous. It is actually ridiculous, <laughs> I think. I, I'm, I'm kind of, I scratch my head at it, too. The black books, for example, are, like, $250, $300 or something like that. Wow. And you're kind of sc- scratching your head being thinking, these fucking cowboys, like, what are they doing with this stuff? And I'm thinking, should I be selling this and getting like a massive affiliate commission or something? But I don't know. I don't know. And <laughs> um, I think the direction that we could go mm-hmm. is we could talk about the ego and what it means to be, do you know, an NPC? An NPC. Pretty... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a, yeah. a bot character who's not there. Yeah. At all. Uh, a deterministic what character with no free will exactly and what i believe the antichrist is is actually a sort of um alliance of the npcs if i don't <laughs> if i say the least and um non-play and character. what i what i, what I <laughs> yeah. find this psychedelic community are so interesting is is that they're so focused on not being an npc they're focused on destroying the ego and then there's a couple of very interesting questions that uh that consequently roll forward from that so i guess we could go that direction and it would probably unfold into what you're looking to in terms of the um, question of uh the collective yeah yeah man i'm open all right all right drank my kefir so i'm ready whenever you are awesome man yeah it's we'll let it go where the conversation needs to go so uh yeah just for those listening we're just going to go in i've got uber boyo back for the sequel hello 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 Hello, mate and uh yeah so we're going to basically go through like ego death carl jung's ion which i haven't personally read but i've I've heard you talk about it a few times and the basically the self with a capital s and the end times antichrist collective shadow and all that good stuff so yeah man we'll just let it go where it needs to go Okay, sweet, sweet. Well, if you if you want, I can uh, rip the plaster off. I can dive straight in if you wish. We can rip straight into the question of yeah, ego man. death. Rip it off you like a band-aid. Me. Deep dive. All right, that's the, that's the stuff. Well, I guess because um, I do, as I said before, I'm approaching your channel. I'm assuming we're recording right now. I, I approach your channel with the idea that you, uh, you, you run basically a psychedelic channel in some sense, although I know that you're definitely got more to you than just that. But that's the sort of, uh, you know, it's the, the little branding that's, that's sort of initially what hits you in the face. And, and the psychedelic community is quite an interesting thing, I find, because these are a group of people who 
when you joined them, and I joined them when I was younger, you were trying to break away from the collective. You actually are, you feel like you grow up, you know, in the kind of stiff, you could even say mm. conservative, boring society of the past. And you say to yourself, because like, I remember when I was a young boy, I was like coming out of countryside, coming out of school, routine and all this type of stuff. And I um, went into like college and, you know, drugs get offered to you when you meet psychedelics, you meet LSD, you meet mushrooms, you meet DMT, you meet Terrence McKenna and all this stuff. You meet Alan Watts. And it feels like you're, you're, you've found this like, you know, radical new way of doing things. And you're sort of like, oh, my God, these these idiots from my past, you know, these these, you know, people from the past, they, they just they know so little they don't get it they're so stuck in this like collective mindset and you start meeting a lot of people around even like the normies you know the npc normies who don't really um explore uh, deep topics or explore their minds in some sense and it's almost like and i even listen to people like terence mckenna and there's this um almost um almost animus or, or masculine assertiveness to it where it's like the people who don't take psychedelics don't take psychedelics because they're afraid of how powerful psychedelics are and they're um they think that like you know if they lose control of their egos they'll 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 dribble and crumble and become an embarrassment and a mess and these people are like frail in the mind they're weak-minded that type of thing and there's this imposition upon the world that um if you if, if you can't take psychedelics if you're not able to go through the experience you're you're not good enough if you're not as as badass as a psychedelic takers are and you, you sort of join into a something close to like a cool kid cult or something like that i, I know noticed and um i know i'm kind of like framing it a bit, a bit negatively in some sense but I, I noticed a lot of these psychological patterns later in my life that there was um a lot of uh, energy behind it where it's like as I said, there was this almost like competitiveness to it, where it's like who can take the most, who who can handle the most craziness, who can get their mind bent the most. And and at the root of it all is this massive change in personality and way of being like you are changing. You're, you're breaking free from that that past that most of us grow up in, unless you grew up in a hippie family and you're um, destroying your personality. Uh, so that you can build a new personality and this new personality is like the the kind of free thinking um open uh kind of kind of neo techno hippie or as uh, terence mckenna called them the techno pagans at the end of time like this is the sort of uh persona that i think that this 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 movement embraces and and one of the big principles behind that i've noticed that is that there's there's a lot of religious architecture underneath it from the new age movement young for example is actually a big cornerstone of this alan watts being another and um, terence mckenna being another as i've already mentioned and one of the key religious um, um, re religious foundations to this is this idea of the the idea of the ego death, and and I really want to kind of dig into this because there is a sort of re religious mystery to the whole thing that we could perhaps explore, and um, maybe maybe go from there. So I don't know if you have any thoughts on what I just said. I can I can keep uh, tearing on if you wish, or if you if anything you'd like to check me on and be like Steph, don't be offending my audience with this nonsense. No 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 don't. It's all good. I think I, I agree with a lot of what you said. I think that when we first get into these psychedelic waters, we kind of become like this psychedelic warrior, right? Where we think that we should just yeah. put mushrooms in the water supply so everyone be can become enlightened <laughs> and put away with religion and materialism and all this kind of stuff and make our own reality. Uh, and of course, like going to extreme in any sort of ideology can be dangerous. Maybe it can be useful at the start, but I think that uh where a lot of this ended up for me anyway at least towards a couple of years in the journey is kind of like this moral relativism or this kind of you can just create your own reality we don't need any structure any order it's like kind of all chaos sort of thing i'm not i'm speaking for myself here of course the thing about psychedelics is that they're very peculiar strange tools that kind of amplify the path that you're on already so it depends on where you're at your belief systems but for me, I kind of went into more of a, uh, not so much solipsism, but kind of in that sort of area, you know? Yeah, yeah. What about, what about I, yourself? Um, like, where, where did you go with this stuff when you, when you first started getting into it? Well, Jesus, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I, I, like, when you take these things, as Terence McKenna said, they're so profound in that they dissolve all your boundaries mm. they dissolve your conception of reality they completely um reframe your understanding of, of what it means to be a person they they give you such a shocking and big experience of 
of of how profound and nuts your mind really is. Mm. They get you in touch with some very very powerful attributes. Like my creativity got a lot stronger after I took them, but I also like had a couple of panic attacks from it as well, which uh, put me in a bad place too. And um, generally speaking, it it radically like changed who I was. And and there's no way around that. Like I these experiences changed my destiny and there's and and not in an insignificant way like i was a different person on a different trajectory afterwards and i was never the same after the psychedelic experience and in some sense they probably made me more open they got me back in touch with um the kind of color i had as a child in some sense and i i guess this is this is sort of what i'm trying to point out is that um when I look at this, and I look at this as, uh, maybe from this sort of comparative religion young side of things, you see in this culture the, the the literal manifestations of you could call them religious archetypes in the sense of um, there's at the center of it you you, you know the baptism or even the 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 holy uh, sacraments like the the you know the way you eat the the bread and the wine in Christianity yeah the Eucharist like the, yeah. The Eucharist, yeah, like that's very much the the idea of like the sacred ayahuasca drink or taking the mushrooms or taking the LSD. There's the sacred sacrament, and then what the sacrament does to you is that it um it, it brings forth a transformation. So that's like you falling in love with Christ that brings forth a transformation, mm -hmm. and then this um moves you. This is a baptism into the culture, and then within the culture you're sort of in this like you know set of myths. There's these magical stories like the high priest instead of Saint Augustine in Christianity or like uh, the Pope you have like Terence McKenna and Alan Watts, as I said, and then um, in wrapped up inside of that is an entire worldview, like in a literal perspective on the nature of reality and a literal perspective that Terence McKenna and stuff like that would promise. Terence McKenna says to you that, for example, there will be a transcendental object at the end of time. We'll all zoom up into the sky and enter into like the consciousness utopia. And that's like the same archetype as the Christian saying there will be a rapture at the end of time when we're all lifted out of our bodies into the kingdom of heaven. And the evil people are dropped down. Like this is the architectural nature of, of, of these things manifesting in this culture. And, and when you enter into this culture, because you are so you're, you're so frail, you're so incapable of resisting mm. these super, super powerful archetypes, you, you'll just digest them without really thinking about it. You know, so I, I take a, a shitload of drugs. You, you get blasted out of your mind. You go through the sacrament. Your, your, your ego gets d dissolved. So that's evil. Like in the, in the Christian sense, Satan which is, you know, uh, your kind of thick-headed anger and your refusal to be Christian is like evil. And that's like in the same sense of you take the, the psychedelics and the, the kind of shaman who's around you will be like, you have to let go of your ego because if you hold on to your ego, this experience will turn bad and you you might even like something bad will happen. And so that's the sort of conception of what mm. is negative, what is wrong. And so you drop that ego, you you formulate uh, this new person and you open yourself up to the world. All these new stories come rushing in from these prophets like Terence McKenna and all this stuff. They direct you towards a no, new vision Pandora's of what society. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's well, the just, thing. In just, sorry, sorry to uh, cut you off, but just, on, that's on, something on. that's really important that uh, I think doesn't get said enough, because uh, not, not a lot of people know this, but at the end of Terence McKenna's life, the mushrooms turned on him, and he never tripped yeah. again. So that's, I heard this, yeah. So I feel like that's something really, because I, I, I feel like a lot of people share Terence McKenna's videos, and to, for his credit, he didn't know that his message was going to be spread for millions and millions of people. I'm sure he would have probably changed the way he spoke about certain <laughs> topics but i think it's important because the, the reason why i say this is because a lot of people are kind of like spreading what he was saying during his lectures but i don't think at the end of his life he would have agreed with a lot of the stuff that he was saying and to be fair to again to his credit he didn't take himself overly serious it's more the people follow him kind of treat his word as as gospel you know what i mean and just for someone who was such a psychedelic advocate to be scarred for life and never return because the mushrooms fucking beat him to a pulp. I just find I don't know what to do about that information, but I think it's <laughs> worth noting. <laughs> um, um, so I have heard about this. I I don't know actually the ins and outs of it, but do you know how much it was? Because I I do know that he said stuff like he only takes DMT like once every three or four years. Um, and was it that type of situation where he took DMT and then he it had to take a break it, from it? It was mushrooms. I, I think he kind of, as far as I understand, he kind of got plunged into the the screaming abyss is what De uh, dennis mckenna calls it but from what i, I heard and it, this is all hearsay so i can't i can't confirm but what i did get told by someone who is in that community who's in the know so take it for what it's worth but they said <laughs> that basically he wasn't like 
giving back to the earth. So the mushrooms kind of turned on him because they have a very kind of like shamanistic, uh, you can call it kind of like a pagan sort of worldview of like nature spirits and all this kind of stuff. So I think from what I understand, he what Terence McKenna was kind of just taking knowledge, 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 just taking, 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 not actually giving back. So the mushrooms were basically like, you know what? F you, man. <laughs> all right, you're all right, you're kicked right, out. Right, we're right, kicking right. you out of the yeah, garden. Right. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe i don't know but that's that's kind of what i got told from someone who apparently is in that circle of the people who knew him so do with that as you will but what i have noticed from psychedelics is that when i've changed my approach to it and for, for, because from the start of my journey i kind of had that like i just wanted to gain knowledge what can i get from this experience was sort of my intention but then when I sw swapped it around of like, how can I give back and not actually expecting any knowledge whatsoever, then the trips changed completely. It was like night and day and they became way less that's, overwhelming. That's that's absolutely fascinating because it actually starts to open up. Um, it even actually continues the, the conversation I was having earlier. For example, this religious architecture, Terence McKenna is the prophet. You take the sacrament. The sacrament um, is the baptism into the real world, which is mm. this world of like everything's made of of, of, of you know, manifest mind, if you will, or something like this. And and even profound things like there's, there's an other side to reality. And if you take the drug, you peel the veil back mm. and you actually see this type of stuff. And. Um, this this becomes fascinating because then like obviously you're going to in Christianity come across the idea of um other higher forces than humanity angels and demons mm -hmm. god satan christ these type of things now this first idea of the ego this is like you know you're kind of the, the the condom you wrap around yourself the bubble around the self that that uh, that protects you from the world that keeps mm. you separate from the world and you do something like psychedelics and that's you ripping out of that that's you breaking free right. and you um achieving the victory over the self so that's the 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 fundamental noble good act in the psychedelic sphere it's the same way as accepting christ it's the fundamental good act um, mm. but so then, the, so the ego when, you could even, uh, the way i even like to think about it it's like the gatekeeper of reality it can't it's like the security guard at the door who kind of lets certain things in and keeps other things out that isn't useful yes. for it. yeah yes um we'll, we'll definitely talk about this from a neuroscientific perspective in a moment definitely because that's that's a great conversation too mm. but um what i'm what i'm sort of seeing with, with regards to what you're saying because it reminds me of um of, of terence mckinney he would always speak in a sense that 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 gave agency to these drugs like he would say the mushroom talk mm. to me Listen and to the mushroom. When yes, in exactly. doubt, double the dose. Psilocybin. Yeah, yeah. Go on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's it. And he would say stuff like yeah, the mushroom yeah. has like a, a distinctive voice, which Terence probably personified to an extent. <laughs> yeah. And then... Um, and when you think about that, that's actually like the, the, the one of these strangest perspectives you could ever imagine because he's suggesting on some level that there's an outside force in reality and this ego mm. of yours keeps you safe from that. And then when you pull that ego down, this outside force can appear to you and actually start to influence you and not influence you in the sense that it shows up and starts talking to you, but it shows up in your head and starts mm. talking to you, which is fucking frightening and terrifying. And then, um, and this puts this idea of like out, outside forces in the world like there's there's these there's this mushroom well if there's a fucking mushroom voice out there what else is there like there could be other things like and then for example he says the dmt elves and mm. you're kind of thinking to yourself oh well when you take a shitload of dmt and you meet these characters what the fuck is that like what's 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 actually going on with these things like what are they are they they're they're, they're not your ego they're not your mind mm. what's going on there autonomous and so entities these, perhaps that's the kind, that's it. that's the overwhelming feeling that I always get that these are distinct personalities and even within yeah. the mushroom because like Terence McKenna referred to it as the mushroom but I I would even go as far to say that each species of mushrooms has its own sub personality to it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. sorry, go well, on, go on. It's crazy stuff. Yeah, well, it is see, crazy. These are all crazy things. <laughs> yeah, because it, it, it it opens you up to some incredibly interesting problems and, and questions and, and all these type of things because you pull this ego down and you 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 you, you thrust yourself headfirst into reality, whatever reality is, like some type of melding of mind and matter, which reality exists as, and you are then interacting with beings, as I said, in this religious sense, who are like the angels and demons of the real world. Mm. And if you were to do this, well, first of all, 
most people would warn you not to open yourself up to that. Just like in Christianity, it's like, don't go fucking around with angels and demons because God knows what you'll come across. You're probably better to just kind of stay in the safe, safe and narrow, stick with Jesus, mm. go to church, and uh, just you know, keep focused on the good. Let us, uh, it's like, not even you know, just let... the Christians either. Like, like Carl Jung, for example, was infamous for kind of speaking against the use of psychedelics, hence the, the term beware of undone wisdom, right? He, he wasn't a fan yeah, yeah. of kind of opening Pandora's box sort of thing well, so, this, yeah there's a lot there's a lot of different schools of philosophy and theology that kind of speak about these things of like not opening yourself up too much to these things yeah yeah and and this is um this is another very very interesting side of things as well like how much do you weigh in <laughs> carl Jung? because carl would suggest the idea that you have this ego and then when you dissolve that ego you open yourself up to the unconscious mind mm. and you wonder then like the unconscious mind, Carol, when he had his, basically he had a psychotic break with the Red Book, mm -hmm. he, he had autonomous forces appear in his reality and speak to him, the anima, the Philemon, these various things. And you kind of, th you scratch your head at that and you kind of think to yourself, what, what the hell does that mean? Like, what's actually going on with this? Is this... Is like is this is Carl meeting his unconscious? What the hell is the unconscious? Where what's coming on there? And when you take psychedelics, is that what's happening? You're you're allowing yourself to be thrust headfirst into the unconscious mind. And is the unconscious mind some type of like supercomputer that lives inside your head, or is Carl right when he says that it's actually like a collective supercomputer? And so, in some sense, when you're taking mm. psychedelics, are you? interacting telepathically with the world it's so crazy some of the depends these ideas. on the dose as well right and it depends on the dose most certainly and um and all of this like leads towards a, a very profoundly religious perspective like i, I think um mm -hmm. something that you can very easily build uh, uh, an entire lifestyle and life personality around and it's complete with stuff like uh like more than just these basic religious rituals but also you know, for example, routines uh, and diets like veganism is very, very tied to psychedelia, as I've said before. And um, that's an example of, you know, the sacred diet. Now, it's it's obviously not the exclusive one of the church of psychedelics, but you can see how it forms right. within that. And, for white people, and it seems to be, yeah, like the veganism yeah, yeah, yeah. and psychedelia. Because <laughs> native yeah, yeah, people absolutely. is not really like that. But yeah, I get what you're saying. And what's really interesting, and this is where I find the very, the importance of not necessarily like a native shaman, but definitely a facilitator of sorts that can put guardrails. That way you can open yourself yeah. up and you can be vulnerable, but you're still protected in the space, right? And this seems very woo-woo and hippie, but I do see a pattern of people just kind of, let's say, smoking DMT in their bedroom all the time. And I, cause, and I know because I have an inside kind of knowledge on this and how, uh, how many emails I get from people just completely fracturing their psyche and basically going into this deep nihilistic route because their their mind got shattered apart and they don't know what reality is anymore whereas i find that's much less likely if you were to do these sacraments in a very respectful manner with a facilitator who's like dedicated their life to these plants and able to put those guardrails up and have a certain relationship with the plants so that you're doing it with respect you know because I, I again it's so hippie but Plants have feelings, bro. They do. If, if you go into it, just like, yeah, whatever, you know, with this arrogance. I mean, right. come on. It's very common, very common for if you have a huge ego going into these high dose experiences that you're most likely going to get hyper slapped. It seems yeah. to be the case. And, and these are actually like a very, very powerful and important points because... Um, this is where I think the conversation starts to become, uh, you know, in the in the sense interesting, in the sense of scary. <laughs> we, we get the gravitas of scary to it because yeah. if you run with all these suggestions I'm making that the the archetypical uh, nature and architecture of this experience and this culture has formulated itself as a religious thing, <clears throat> like it is presenting itself literally as a religious thing, then you have to ask the question of, um, well, what what were the what were those religions of the past getting? to like were they actually experiencing similar things just maybe from a slightly more conservative perspective or maybe early christianity was a lot more in touch with this type of stuff mm. who knows oh but, actually I, I i interviewed uh brian Mordesco, who was a scholar who he was actually recently on the joe rogan experience and he studied for like 10 years like went to eleusis in greece went to the secret archives in the vatican like 10 plus years basically studying the origins of early christianity and what they found 
was like actual physical evidence that they had they found certain psychedelic compounds in the Eucharist itself, and it actually ties in. Yeah. And which I, and what was another? It's a kind of a random fact, but really interesting is that early Christianity, it was actually the women. It was exclusively the women who were allowed to facilitate these sacraments and experiences for hundreds of years. Yeah, and yeah. Christianity used to be considered this illegal, crazy cult, and the Romans killed oh, them yeah. for this stuff. For, Hundreds of years, dude. Yeah. And then they kind of took over. Yeah. Like, all right, ladies, thanks for the foundation. We're taking over kind of thing. Well, this this is um this is actually an unbelievably interesting conversation because if you look at what's going on now in politics, you'll see um, conservative people, specifically almost like you could think of it in America because this is mm -hmm. the sort of frame for most modern politics. You have the, the Repo Republican Party, which is sort of considered like, you know, the, the conservative male party of the old boys, you know, the grand old party, the old boys club. And um, now what's fascinating about this is that that's sort of similar to the Roman patriarchs. And what you look at psychedelic culture, psychedelic culture is not very right wing. Let's put it that way. Like it's very, 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 very left. It's very, very heavy in that regard. And most, it's someone most like Jordan. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. M most of it, certainly. Mm. And, and Jordan Peterson, um, uh, and he, I remember when he was a thing, he was proposing this idea that um, the difference between the left and the right was psychological and that the left are more open. Whereas mm -hmm. the right are more about managing things and openness is dictated by, um, you know, it's almost like openness to experience. It's a psychological trait. And, he, and there's there's very hard evidence that uh, when you give someone mushrooms, they'll have a permanent increase in their trait openness for an extended period of time, sometimes even a couple of years afterwards. Mm -hmm. And so you, you, you kind of look at the um, left, you look at the left wing movements, you look at that, uh, that idea, you look at their values that they propose, they propose equality, tolerance, openness, no bound, like think of even something as simple as like the borders, like, you know, I want to build a wall, I want to keep people out, that's putting up a boundary. And of course, the left, the Terence McKenna people, like the, the, the kind of religious <laughs> architecture is sort of suggesting like, no borders are bad on first principle. And so there's, there's, there can be no borders at all. So the Republicans are like trying to put borders in place. The, 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 the liberals, the lefties are trying to dissolve boundaries. Mm. And it's a, it's a war of like worldviews, if you will. And, and do you think that's a, then, more a reaction of like, kind of like the pendulum swinging the other way? And we just kind of go on through this extreme, no boundaries, no rules, no religion kind of phase. Well, uh, and then we're going to eventually uh, kind of balance out or... Well, I'll talk about that now in a second because this is um, this is an unbelievably interesting conversation, uh, precisely when you bring Christianity and Rome into it. Because the the kind of passage of civilization is that you will initially have a highly, even I would say, highly male energy, which is the assertive civilization establishing energy, uh, Romulus and Ramus. Mm -hmm. And these guys tend to be quite nasty. They they put together, they build up a big society, and then they establish institutions. And the in institutions is what Nietzsche would call living institutions, you know, vibrant um, institutions that are like the representation of the will of the people. And then over time, it's like a young boy, you know, it's like you're growing up really fast and you're really energetic and you're really powerful. And like as a kid, you're kind of fluid, but you're, you've got, you're full of energy and passion. And this is what like early Rome was like. And then after mm. a period of time, the your your like with a body, your bones get hardened, your bones fuse, your bones get dense. Your, your skeletal system right. gets dense, set your firm ways. up, mm -hmm. you set your ways, you become obviously conservative, you don't grow anymore, you don't do any radical things, you kind of set into a pattern, and you become stiff, your ego consolidates, and you're probably going to need a very heavy dose of psychedelics to break yourself out of that, <laughs> and then in a civilization sense, this is like, you know, peak Rome, peak mm -hmm. Rome where you have like a very conservative set of institutions that don't try innovate, they don't try to do anything new, and they just kind of roll along like a bureaucracy. And then over time, that stuff gets stale. And so what happens is you get the a reaction to it. You get people who want to push against this. Now, there's a variety of different ways that this happens. Some people just genuinely don't like bureaucracy. Other people are just like, um, and, and this is what's so interesting about this in regards to Christianity. Other people are just generally orientated towards um, anti anarchy, anti system energy, and um, fuck the system dissolve the boundaries that type of thing and oh, the romans man. yeah yeah so i've got because uh, it's just well, everything that you're talking about right now is like uh, chile my my home country my where well, my parents where well, my mum is from it's kind of like falling apart in this way and it's gone so extreme anarchy yeah. anti-authoritarian fuck religion uh more vegan communism 
atheist. It's kind of all in the same group in that, in this context. I'm not talking about like everywhere else, but in this context, it's all sort of like in the one group, right? And they burned churches, dude. A, a cop got killed last week. Yeah, I heard that. It's like, yeah. pff, like yeah, literal not... chaos, man. Yeah, it's like the apocalypse, man. They just want to destroy yeah. everything. Screw the system. And that's that's really it. And and this is this is actually a fascinating thing because what happened at the end of Rome is obviously Rome got stiff and old, and then there was all these social revolutions, and then what happened is the barbarians at the gates came, the Germans came down, hmm. and the Germans kicked down the door, and they burst in and they said, "We're the kings now." And so the old Roman, you know, like think of it like the right wing Republican grand old party Roman patricians that were the conservative guys. They were sort of trying to manage the population, trying to be like, guys, here, look, let's all try to get along. Rome is a great thing. And then all the, the lefties would be like the lefties back in their day would be like, fuck off. Like the Christians even would be like, no, Rome is crap. It's a highly unequal privileged society where Roman these Roman patricians are like the upper class and they yield all of us basically as slaves. We're not standing for this anymore. And there was these constant rebellions of the underclasses, slave revolts, as Nietzsche called them. And, and Christianity was a part of that. And then um, the Germans come in and the Germans like kick down the doors, as I said, because the Romans are so busy dealing with rebellions that the, the, the Germans barbarians walk in, kill the patricians and just take over. Wow. What, what year is say, this oh, around roughly? Well, this is this is what's very very scary about this is that um, so so when Christianity showed up in Rome, it was initially like literally irrelevant, like it was just not that big of a deal at all, and um, and and the way the Romans understood this, and if you study the Roman religion, it's so fascinating as well. They they understood uh, Christianity as atheist, and they oh. understood Judaism as atheist. Yeah, they saw them as 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 religions that were weren't godly because. Oh. Um, they, they had this proposition about God. Oh, it's very, very, it's very, very weird. They had this proposition about God that's actually radical, radically different than the Romans. The mm. Romans proposed Zeus or Jupiter, as we understand them, and he was like this idea of uh, the, 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 well, the word soul for the Romans. If you actually learn the word soul in Latin in Catholicism, it's called anima. It's animus, and that's actually the same word that Jung used right. very famously. Animation. And, yeah. Exactly. And so their conception of the soul was almost like energy. Hmm. And they understood that when you're living, you have energy and to have a soul has energy. And so Zeus, Jupiter gives energy to the, the to you and that makes you strong. And, and Christianity and, and Judaism seems to have um, actually kind of a juxtaposed perspective on that, where um, sometimes if you're very, very energetic and full of life, as you would say, that could be considered evil. Like someone who's like, you know, a crazy, a crazed, mad serial killer. Like that would be uh, not considered like very godly at all. And no. so they they, pro they propose as something closer to um, maybe suffering or, 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 or meekness or, or compassion and all this. So anyway, there was this mad conflict of these two things going on. And um, they, they also framed it as a superstitio, which is where we get the word superstition. And, and this is the idea of like fanatic religious stuff. This is actually sort of similar to how... Um, you could you could see the, the kind of Republicans of the day look at the, the liberals, you know, the way they sort of say, like they, they say the, the purple haired crazed feminists, they call them, they say like, oh, they're just insane with their ideologies. They call them ideologues. Do you ever hear that before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's literally yeah. how how, the, how these Romans would use the word superstitio. It's like, oh, you're taking this stuff too, too seriously, hmm. this type of thing. Of course, Christianity, a lot, a lot like the left movements, eventually started to take over. And it started to seep into all the institutions and it was most favored among women. And it often got into these very, very famous families by getting the women to convert. And then the, the, the men would convert with them because, you know, if your wife's walking in and being like, I have a new religion, you're probably <laughs> going to bend to her eventually. And so um, yeah. and so this this eventually like t took over the whole civilization to the point where um, there was this massive revolt. All, obviously, the very famous stuff where they changed the religion, Constantine. Uh, there was like all these wars and all this stuff. But then what's kind of frightening about it is that um, – this was at the end of the Roman body. And then I think within 40, 50 years of Rome turning Christian, the Rome was invaded for the first time and conquered by the Germans. The barbarians had happened. I think the, it was Christian in the end of the 300s or the, the start of the 400s. Okay. And by the mid 400s, the mid 400s, I think you had um, Alaric the Goth 
who was who who was the first man to to invade Rome in 800 years or something like this, wow. which is uh, it's not it's, it's so strange. And this is also the transition of the ion, if you think about it too. Okay, okay. And and you you kind of look at what's going on now, and all of this stuff starts to look sort of similar Cycles. in the sense of like, yeah, uh, yeah man, and in the sense of like uh, all these the, the sort of same modern perspective. You wonder if the the kind of left openness to um, ideas no boundaries thing it, it looks so similar to christianity the religion of openness no boundaries love everybody is one under christ and then of course this idea of the psychedelics being involved like imagine like it kind of looks almost like the same pattern as if there was this kind of grassroots psychedelic experience thing going on where every everybody was taking this great messiah this great great prophet who was jesus who i believe was real and, yes, and they were taking his words yeah they were taking his words and they were they were playing with his ideas and then they were taking drugs with it as well. And they were like getting the ego death thing mm -hmm. and it started to postulate a new religion and all new religions are disruptive. And so it shot through Rome and sort of um, became essentially ended Rome in some sense. And this isn't necessarily some type of condemnation of Christianity, though you could definitely argue against it for these reasons. But it's more just the idea that like Rome was sort of over as a thing. Right. And it was time to move on and, to and something this, new. And this is the Roman Catholicism because, like, you know, as as you know, there are kind of main branches of Christianity. Some would argue that it's yeah. East, Eastern Orthodox is like the OG Christian church. And then there's yeah. Roman Catholicism and Protestant. Christianity came about what late 1500s if I'm correct yeah oh yeah something that was, like that? that was way later that yeah was way yeah way later, way later. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so I'm back, getting ahead of myself this, yeah yeah sorry <laughs> back back then these two things were were united and um Christianity was just like one big blob mm -hmm. but see this is what becomes so fascinating about it as well because Christianity goes through the same set of experiences you have like a, a young youthful movement that was probably very decentralized and grassroots and was probably just a load of boys and girls hanging out in like the the forest taking drugs and shit just having a bit of a buzz and then it slowly started to become a, a serious political force and then at that point christianity and christ himself moved from being a sort of like floozy loving dude to actually a very stable um apollyan moral dude in the sense of like it started to formulate into a religion and religion means a dogma and a dogma means rules and then suddenly we've we've gone from christianity being like dissolve all your boundaries to, to christianity being like here's a set of boundaries you must obey in order to be to walk in the mm. light of god and and that's when the catholic church forms and this is when i, I believe the romans patricians the this like the republican party got on board with christianity and said we're going to try and make this work for ourselves this is why catholicism looks like paganism this is why the protestants freaked out about it is because mm. if you look at catholicism and then you read the bible you realize that the two of the things don't really match that closely catholicism is almost like this this kind of crafted religion that kind of loosely interprets the bible in order to 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 make something functional and that does not to discredit it as as um nietzsche and young would say the catholicism is probably the one of the smartest institutions in the world when you really analyze it properly mm. but nonetheless you see all this stuff going on and this would like if we were to predict the future future based off this stuff this would almost be like um in america uh, assuming america doesn't collapse and uh, get taken over by bar barbarians which maybe could happen and um, the the grand old party the republican party will take the liberal ideals and the left-wing ideals and this that are coming out of the psychedelic movement and subvert them take them and turn them into like dogmas so it's like you know you can't go against tolerance or you can't go against whatever and then um, and use that to kind of create a institution that will again create another new system of power and then all the the kind of hippies from the 60s will be like pulling their hair out being like oh my god it happened it happened but this seems to be like the pattern of history in some sense and and then um, yeah well there's a lot of there's a lot of different directions we could go with this because this is a fascinating conversation so do you have any questions thoughts uh whew. i have a lot of thoughts but i think we'll just I'll leave it at that for now. I'll I'll, I'll kind of chime in when it, when I think it's necessary. But actually, just something that you said about the how psychedelics could potentially be used for you know authoritarian dogma sort of thing, and I can already sort of see it a little bit now. Like if you question like the great Alan Watts or Terence McKenna, or if you question yes. non-duality, yes. and you know, and I think uh, where the dogma comes, uh, and it's not necessarily the psychedelic culture in and of itself but certain people or certain leaders i would say is that 
they would say things like, uh, oh, or if you want to have access to ultimate truth, all you have to do is have a direct experience of it. And I think that's where we yeah. kind of make a huge mistake into thinking that direct experience and the interpretation of that experience therefore equals absolute truth. And that's a very, yes, very yes, yes. slippery slope, I think, which we need to be and, a little bit more, this... more critical of. And this is this is this is unbelievably fascinating because um, you look specifically at the Catholic Church and you you imagine that the Catholic Church. So we're, we're, what we're drawing here for anybody who's watching is kind of like just being like, what the hell are these guys talking about? Why are we talking about Rome? And <laughs> um, the, the, the sort of um, the, we're, we're trying to draw an analogy between the formulation of Christianity from being a kind of radical anarchist. You could even say psychedelic hippie movement into a consolidated, firm, dogmatic right. Cause, Catholic cause church. Because people say that, oh, Christianity, they're the oppressors. It's like, dude, for hundreds of years, they were the oppressed ones. They were getting yes, killed, yes. getting thrown to the lions for, yes. do, for talking and, and about like, these ideas, you know. And and this is what's unbelievably fascinating about this is that they, they were originally like the hippie movement as it sort of is now. And then they turned into the mainstream. And mm. then the second they got mainstream power, they started to become dogmatic, which is now like that's if, if you ever want a red pill, you should watch out for stuff like this, because this is sort of how human nature works. And we'll talk about ego and left brain and right brain now in a moment. So basically, um, another thing about Christianity that's fascinating is the fact that it began with psychedelics. And then once it consolidated into an institutionalized religion, it pr it quickly dropped psychedelics. And the, the sacrament, the Eucharist, became wine as opposed to what, what you, you know, for example, the guy that you had on described it. Uh, it was always with and, wine, actually. It was always mixed in with the wine. And, and that's sort of there what I mean. Go. It became yeah. like, it, it got sterilized, if you know what I mean. Mm. It went from being um, a, like a psychedelic thing that destroyed your ego to perhaps you could right. just say pure alcohol. And same with the Greeks, enforced. by the way. Like all, all the famous philosophers that we know of all kind of attribute their, their knowledge and, and the success of their society to Eleusis, the Eleusis Mysteries, which was this yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. festival where they had this sacrament with beer, uh, Kaikion, where they found... Kaikion, yeah. Where they, they basically... They think that it's they had ergot in it, which is kind of like a variation of LSD or where LSD was synthesized from. But yeah, anyways, that's another uh, and, rabbit hole. And, and, so, and so this is like when Christianity spread into Europe um, a couple of hundred years later, it, it began to take on the force of the anti-psychedelic movement, <laughs> which is so fascinating because they, they went oh, yeah. into Germany and in Germany, they used to all drink beer with mushrooms. That, like you know, all over Europe, they drank beer with mushrooms. That was one of the, that was another sacrament for the pagan religions. Mm -hmm. And the Christians would come in and they would like try stop that behavior. So what the fuck are you guys doing? So taking these demon drugs, basically. And so you see the institution <laughs> starting as this like radically open thing with psychedelics as a centerpiece. And then it becomes a stabilized, firm thing that's focused on social order. And I, what I'm trying to get at here is that it actually looks an awful lot like um, Rome had an ego. Rome had an ego. All right. right. It was like if you if you look at the civilization like a, a person sitting in a hut, right? And and his name is Rome and he has this firm ego. And then this guy Jesus runs in with like all these girls and he's like gives them you know psychedelic wine. And then Rome takes the psychedelic wine and it just destroys Rome. It destroys his ego. It destroys his sense of himself. Everything peels apart. His entire his entire religion, his entire right. religion crucifies entire him in front of everybody in the most brutal way gets possible. Dissolved. Yeah. Absolutely. It gets dissolved, it gets ripped apart. And then suddenly Rome has an ego death. And Rome is sitting there and he's like staring around and be like, what the hell is reality? And then Jesus is like, I'm reality. And then Rome centers himself on Jesus because that's the thing that's going to win out because there's a lot of things competing at the time. Mm. And so then Rome consolidates a new ego around Jesus and he starts to his, his left brain creates a new worldview out of Jesus. And then that firms up. And then that turns into a dogmatic, left-brained, egotistical perspective. Mm. And then it loses touch with the direct experience again. And, and if you actually look at the way the Roman religion worked, it was the exact same thing. The, the Roman religion was a vibrant, living, young thing as it was starting out. And then it consolidated. And then all of the Roman intellectual elites, the pagan Hellenic intellectual elites, were sort of like atheists who said that the gods aren't really real. They're just metaphors. It got stiff and stable. And just as they were thinking this, 
the, um, the Christians come in with their new mm. radical superstition. And if you read all the pagans of the time, like Julian the Apostate, um, they all say, for example, Hellen Hellenic philosophy is so much more sophisticated than Christianity. But Christianity has so much more power because it's so emotional in, emotional in the way that it reaches people. And people want, they meet it like, Persuasion 101. People care about emotions. They don't care about like logic and all this type of stuff. And so, mm. and but to be the, fair, it does have the theology behind like true, like the true Christianity has like a lot of uh, sound logic and reason. Yes. If you when you go really deep into it, like it, it, yeah. it makes a lot of sense even from that perspective. Oh. Yes, 100%. And, then, 100%, and, and from and the I, surface I, level, it seems ridiculous. And then you got like the, you know, the Richard Dawkins, like, oh, that's, that's absolutely preposterous. Uh, uh, Christianity, uh, flying spaghetti monster. That's uh, nonsense. All poppycock. But yeah, but yes. you need to go a little bit deeper into it. But anyways, I'll, I'll, I digress. Well, <laughs> well 100%. And, and this is sort of what, what um, you, you notice with this is that uh, Christianity comes along and it's like this um, massive shock to the Roman ego. It's like it's mm. literally like taking a, a hit of DMT yeah. and seeing, <laughs> so seeing what's going on out there and like you take a hit of dmt and you meet the machine elves but in, instead of a machine elf you meet jesus and rome is like freaking out and then rome spends the next literal thousand years trying to figure out what the fuck just happened and that's the whole idea behind jesus like what was that revelation what was jesus who was he mm. you're trying to figure out like who exactly was this dude and that's when the theology is actually put together on the like on the extensively long study of jesus you get the Christian church and Christian theology. And Nietzsche noticed the European mind from sitting there for about a thousand years trying to figure out what the Bible meant, who Jesus was, actually created in Europe this ability to be disciplined as, an inst as, a, as a people for unbelievably long periods of time. And that gives them this ability to enact like really, really profound goals. So the mm. Christian church gets really disciplined in a way that like, you know, the previous pagan Europeans weren't. They could just, you can't, it, like, it's so hard to stay organized for uh, a couple of weeks, never mind for a hundred years. Like, think about generations of organizational skill that Christianity imposed upon Europe. It made them focus mm. on one thing for so long. And then it and got, yeah, and like, it seems you know, like it got, sorry, it just seemed to get like fractured, you know, like, because the pagans were, because, you know, I've been in a lot of, a few, a lot of ceremonies, psychedelic ceremonies, and it is kind of, pagan in the way in a surface surface level perspective seems very pagan but it is kind of like the focus on mother nature and honoring earth and the the spirit of the fire and the moon and the sun and all that kind of stuff whereas christianity was like no 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 you should only honor the father like the heart the really hardcore ones you know and i think there's time there's it's good to balance both yep. creation and creator but anyway yes 100 percent and, and well i guess just to kind of complete the arc of my thinking on this is that um then towards the end of of the 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 end, like our era you know comes the 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 actual destruction of the christian ego mm -hmm. so the christians are going through what rome is going for, through so you imagine this dude rome he uh, has this ego death and then he he snaps out of it. He sees the DMT elves and one of the, like Jesus is the main dude. And then he's like trying to build his worldview. He's like Terrence McKenna, just sitting there for like <laughs> decades, centuries, just trying to be like, what the hell is going on? I've got to talk about this. He, through, he forms yeah. together, <laughs> he forms together Christianity as an institution. And then thousands of years later, Christianity then gets challenged and Christianity gets this new flash, this new uh, ego destruction. And that's actually what we're living through now. Like around about the 60s was probably it, was probably when hmm. that was really, it really came to fruition. And um, it was kind of boiling up for, for like, you know, Nietzsche with the death of God and all that type of stuff. But 60s is when people properly got Dionysian. People properly started to take a load of drugs. And then what happens is you have this guy, Rome, who's now middle name is Christian. And he's sitting there and his ego is getting destroyed again. This is like his second DMT trip. And so now he's taking more DMT and he's seeing all this stuff again. But instead, there's no Jesus there. And and instead, what he's interacting with is like the sort of problem of he believes is the world dead. But no, instead, there's these like gray fucking aliens or there's these these machine elves or something like this. Or there's Mother Gaia and all this type of stuff. And, and, and you wonder, it's like, why is he coming in contact with these things? And a lot of people obviously are still seeing Jesus in these experiences. And so Jesus is obviously an active force still. But but um, we've got we're, we're going through the DMT trip right now, the cult, the cultural DMT trip. And so um, you, you wonder, like, what's going on? Like, are we seeing 
like are those are we seeing why why aren't we seeing Jesus as much as we we used to and um, are these people who are seeing like the aliens or the or the the DMT elves are they seeing like the antichrist like is that what they're seeing literally in the sense of like it's it's going against that like what's what's going on what's what their ego is getting destroyed what are they seeing out there that's 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 going on and then what will come after this is the construction of a new cultural ego and is that like maybe you could even say is that what we're going through right now where and um, you see people give out about ca- like the left wing can- cancel culture mm. and is that because the left the left wing has achieved power and now they're starting to dogmatize like the way that um like the way that uh that the christians did eventually like it's a very very weird way of thinking but but there's like a kind of a funny attitude like think of it this way you know the way um america have like the biggest army in the world and if you don't like if you don't embrace like basically homosexuality and like nothing against gays or anything like that if you don't don't embrace that they'll like show up with like their you know the 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 big army how dare you yeah (laughs) how dare you yeah and it's like they're like imagine it's all over hollywood man like just i can't watch a show without some you know them kind it seems like they're really pushing that in the forefront and and this is the sort of thing is that like Mm. 60 years ago 60 years ago if you were if you were gay you would have been castrated chemically Mm. you know like that's how extreme it was in places like england and whatnot maybe 67 that's crazy man that's crazy and then and then the 60s come along Mm. And it becomes this like radical open experience. Yeah. And then everybody is like, uh, you know, like accepting of all this stuff. And now it's coming to the point where like, it's like, you better accept this stuff or you're like kicked out of society and whatnot. And it looks like, like it's the consolidation of a new worldview, a new perspective, a new wealth and shaft, mm. that type of thing. And it's it's an absolutely fascinating thing. And, and you wonder, like, what's going on? Like, what are we living through? Are we living through the consolidation of an ego? And then you have a lot, a lot of very scary questions. Are we living through the end of Rome is often the question. Like, what, what does all this stuff mean? And um, so I guess I could dive I could dive deeper into that idea of 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 ego. I could put the neuroscience under that, because what I'm actually describing here is not something that is um, that is a. Uh, out of nowhere like this actually looks like it happens in our brains almost all the time so if you want i can dive into that that's true yeah yeah but just before you get into that i just want to add a few things because it definitely does seem that we are living through like the end times is a kind of antichrist and i mean that in a literal sense just literally going against the cross right that's the thing that seems to offend pop culture more than anything you know what i mean like i even recently because I, I i interviewed a christian and i got someone from the psychedelic community who literally made a video about me saying that I'm promoting fascism, I'm against LGBTQ, <laughs> um, blah, 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 whatever. And we didn't even yeah, talk about that. Yeah, there you go, yeah. And it was like, hang on. So if I was to interview a Muslim, I guarantee you that person would not have made that video, even though that they kill homosexuals in their, in their culture. So why is it particularly Christianity? Because from the, they're saying it's like, yeah, it's because they're, they're not accepting homosexuality, blah, blah, blah. And that, that's fine. But then... Why is all your anger towards this particular religion and not another one, which is actually a yeah. lot more hardcore and it's much faster growing, it seems. So I'm, like, I'm not just saying, I'm not saying like, oh, the point that I'm trying to make is not like, oh, go hate Islam or whatever, but it's inconsistent. It seems to be particularly yeah. anti-Christian. And, that, and you even see it in like Hollywood movies and shows on Netflix. That's the, that's yes. the one religion that you can talk shit about. YouTube won't do a thing either. But then as soon as you criticize yeah. other religions, then it's hate speech. So it's yes. just something... And so yeah, I, I, would, I would propose to you, like, uh, my suggestion is that this actually makes... It's perfectly consistent and logical from the perspective of psychology. Mm-hmm. Like, what is happening is, as I said, um, Christianity represents the ego of the West. That's what it is. Mm. And the West is, the, is, is Rome. Like, it's the, the thing in the past. It's the old ego. It's the old form. So true. And now there's... It's it's like you know the West Rome Rome with you know hyphenated Christian as his, his middle name has decided to take a DMT smash, and this <laughs> has blasted him open around about the 60s, and now he's sitting in the aftermath trying to figure out what's going on, and he's very resistant to putting back together this idea of who he was, this this old ego. There's this new force that he's just been he's after getting blown open in some sort, yeah. and so these people um. They, they may like a lot of people do point out it's like it's hypocritical and all that type of stuff and and like you know maybe it's not logically consistent in some sense but but it it makes perfect sense in terms of uh, emotionally what's happening because these people 
they, these people want a new society. They want That's a new true. ego consolidated. And, and, and you so think about Christianity from, as well. Like, what year is it? 2020 after what? The whole world agrees yeah. with this. So it's like, of course, it, it, it does actually make perfect sense why that seems to be the target. So, yeah, I, yeah. I, I feel what you're saying. Yeah, a hundred percent, hundred percent. And so it's it's like, um, and even Terence McKenna, if you listen to him, and you listen to him in this sort of angle, you kind of actually watch for this. I think that he was unconsciously um, doing this. Like I don't think he was aware that he was he was doing this, but 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 absolutely, he's constantly talking about this idea of dissolving um, the Western ego so that we can mm. propel ourselves forward into a new perspective, which is the techno pagan at the end of time, of like the radical openness, and that we're going to launch into the utopia, the, the kingdom of heaven, and the future as i was trying to say it's a, there's a religious architecture slipping in place that hits all the archetypes that is um well, like re- presenting itself as something that will fulfill people's religious needs we'll give you a community we'll give you sacraments we'll give you a diet we'll give you ideals we'll give you profits we'll give you a a, a purpose which is that, that that tech utopia where we all plug ourselves into the collective and whatnot and it's all there and it's all absolutely fascinating and like i'm 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 not necessarily i'm not even sure how you're supposed to interpret this because if if you and I were like say say for example me and you we'll, we'll put on the, the 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 put on the dress and say let's act like conservative Christians for a second okay. and we're supposed to we're in the GOP so we're in like the Republican Party in America at the very top and we're like Jesus these fucking liberals right, what are we going right. to do about this what now we if if we if we took a, a, a historical time travel power and zooped, zooped ourselves back to Rome we would be the 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 roman pagans sitting there looking at the women getting obsessed with this new christian movement and we'd be like for fuck's sake the fucking women with their stupid Mm. christianity what are we going to do about this it's the exact same pattern and and we are like the old we're the the final um uh, bricks in the ego trying to hold itself together as it's finally getting dissolved and we have some very difficult problems because on the one hand christianity won and so should we get on board with the new thing and and participate in it or do we get machiavellian do we get on board with the new thing and try bend it to our will now right. there's a very very crazy thought or like do we resist christianity the new, hmm. do we resist the new thing with everything we have because we know that when christianity comes into rome rome gets conquered almost immediately almost immediately because hmm. when the ego dissolves we'll talk about this in the sort of neuroscience thing you become very ineffective in the world like when you're blasted out of your mind on DMT and a lion walks into that hut, you're fucked. You're fucked, yeah. Your ego is, <laughs> your ego is, actually, your ego is actually there to defend you in some sense. And so should we actually be resisting this type of stuff? Because it's dangerous. It, it's civilizationally um, threatening in some sense. And, and hmm. I think when you... Sorry, I was just... You ha, have ha, that perspe- ha, sorry, go on, go on, go on. I'm... No, 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 no. What are you going to say? I was just going to say, yes. um, what are your thoughts on breaking down the system? Do you think that we should just dissolve the ego completely or do you think it might be a bit wiser to integrate the kind of foundation of christianity or do you think this if we just completely destroy the ego screw the system we'll figure out a plan later do you think this could kind of produce certain perils or uh, like a collective ego backlash that could make things a lot worse because like of course we have ideals about certain things and how things are going to play out but then there's a reality of it as well and i don't know i don't know how it's going to play out but i'm just looking back on history it just doesn't seem to go well when you just have this kind of destroy the ego sort of mentality well this this is it The, the ego death of rome where the Roman religion died, the Roman society died, and it was replaced by a new religion and and, uh, essentially just a new society. Um, Christianity was highly utopic. Christianity was saying we'd all become Christian and we'd enter into the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. That's what they believed. Mm -hmm. That's the promise. And that sounds so much like what you're hearing now, which is we'll all progress into the utopia. Wow. It's the exact same. There's so many parallels between Christianity and the psychedelic community. They have like, because a lot of them are very resistant to Christianity, but man, like the deeper I go into Christianity, I'm like, man, there are so many parallels here. It's like, it's mind blowing. It's absolutely mind blowing. It is. It's. And they think that they're against each other, but it's like, man, I don't know. I think we're we're getting a little bit too because we live in times right now. Where it's like full of turmoil. We're divisive more than ever. We're like the the ego is getting fragmented. We're fighting even amongst ourselves, like even within communities, which I kind of think is silly. And so. All right, let's say we Rome has its ego death. 
tear, tear down the system. What new ideology is going to show up? Is it going to be the paganism? Is it going to well, be psychedelia? Is it going to be atheism? Is well, it going to be is, Islam? Is kind of, what's what's going to yeah, happen? Well, well, this is the kind of this is the big question because, and this is a serious question because when Christianity came into Rome, it promised the kingdom of heaven, mm-hmm. and when it got power, Rome within fifty years was getting invaded by barbarians. The barbarians weren't people like the the patrician Romans focused on culture and and citizenship and higher institutions and law. These were, you know, they were they were sort of just, Nietzsche called them thugs. Mm. And then what followed was a dark age that lasted a thousand years. Oh. It was the end. The Christians ran around them. Once they got power, what did the Christians do? They ran around pulling down the statues of Rome. Have you seen that recently? No. They, um, What's going on? You, did, you, did you not see all the statues getting pulled down in America? Oh, I, I, yeah, I've heard about it. I just haven't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it, but I know that that's and, what's going on. Yeah. Well, like I told yeah, you in Chile, and, they're burning down the churches, literally burning down churches. So that's, what, <laughs> that's what's so fascinating. So when the Christians got into Rome, they burnt, they destroyed the temples. Fuck. They pulled down the statues. <laughs> they um, they heavy, burned dude. the library. Yeah. Yeah, it's so crazy. It's so Fuck. crazy. They, bu- they burned the library of Alexander. Uh, not sorry. They did, they did not do that. Apologies for saying <laughs> that. There was a very, very um, blasphemy. There was a very, very big uh, uh, library in Egypt somewhere, and it got destroyed by them. Uh, so I believe. And um, obviously, the, like the very, very famous thing is that they got rid of all the knowledge, and the knowledge ended Isn't up that what going. What YouTube to the is doing with their purge, with their can- so just, yes, you know, wow. So yeah, it's probably. It's probably something like that. And then obviously all the knowledge went over to um, the Muslim places. And then the Muslims brought that back with the Ottomans. And then the Renaissance happens because the Italians get all this stuff back. And suddenly they're like, whoa, what the fuck? Oh, my God. Plato or, and all these people or whatever it was, they get it all back again and, and, and all that type of stuff. And again, this is a, it's a little bit broad stroke. But, but you can kind of see that the pattern is that Christianity it, it eradicates all that. They dogmatize. So what happens is the ego gets destroyed. The, the Rome goes into a crisis. The crisis consolidates in a new ego. And then it's like it's like someone who's after having a freak out. They're, they're after like panicking and they're trying to put themselves together. And so what they do is they, you know, they, they cut out all the bullshit. They stop eating McDonald's. They stop eating uh, any weird new foreign food. They just go down. They say, this is my diet. It's very simple. And um, they cut out all their, their weird friends that they kind of only half know. And they say, I just want my small group of friends. I need to, you know, it's like mm-hmm. someone who's, who's coming out of a Virtual bad trip. reality. I'm it, just going to live in my own universe right now. Mm-hmm. Well, well, sometimes, but also in the sense of like, if you have like a bad trip, it's, it's, you just get back the fundamentals. And you become quite strict, you know, become disciplined, right. grounded get up early in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gr- groundedness and all that type of thing. Mm. And so the 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 Rome, the Christian Romans put back their their uh, their their ego, but of course they they destroy quite a lot in doing that. And that's actually what's necessary. And then that becomes dogmatic Christianity. And and what's so fascinating is that it wasn't like that at the start, but it did become that. And so the people nowadays critiquing that. Are saying like Christianity stiff, old, and racist, basically, which is like all right, and and they're trying to destroy that, and they'll probably they they might succeed. We don't know, and um, but they're and they're strawmanning that, Christianity because a lot of the, the yes. a lot of the criticisms about Christianity isn't even true, and the deeper you go into it, it's like no, no, actually, it's it's like it really is a religion of love and accepting and forgiving forgiveness and all that kind of stuff. They just kind of cherry pick certain things and it's like ah this is horrible but you could do that with any ideology man any of it well see see, this is the scary thing is that christianity did that as well for example the figure (laughs) the figure of the figure of satan the figure of satan you probably think of him as like a a guy with goat legs with horns okay there's an angel the 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 figure of satan in the bible is not like that at all the figure of Satan in the Bible is the deceiver, yes. But the guy with the horns and the goat legs is actually the European god Pan, the god of nature. And so when the Christians oh, came in... Oh, really? Okay. The, yeah, the, European, the European gods of fertility, for example, there's this god called Seranus in the Celtic lands, in mm-hmm. Gaul and in, in, in Ireland. And he was a deer, a stag, like a stud. It's the same way nowadays we say, oh, you're such a stud. You know, you're such a handsome stud. You're full of vitality and life. And what the the priests did is that they would um, frame this guy. They would paint this guy as Satan, this figure of Satan, wow. and discourage people from 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 following him. 
he's satanic. So they're, they're straw manning what he is because he represents the fertility of life. But they were just like, no, he's evil. This is Nietzsche's idea, good and evil, right. very simplistic. Is this when, basically when, saying that nature is evil in, in a sense? If, if... Yes, very much so, yeah. But like, it's not even that because it's, it's, it's more about like politics. They were just trying to create the Catholic Church. Right, and, and stop and, the pagan and, rituals and praying to the nature boom, spirits and boom. psychedelics, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Boom. So, like, actually, if you were to sit down and study it comprehensively, you'd be like, well, this is the nature spirit. This is a very, very vivid and complex thing. But the priests, they were like, I don't give a fuck about what this means. I want you to stop doing that stuff. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. And I'll do whatever works to get you to stop doing. And calling him Satan was what worked. And so Satan gets hairy legs like a goat and then he gets horns. And and wow. that's what happens when when they go into um, they go into Germany, the God actually this is this is so weird bro right so the word god <laughs> this whole conversation has been weird yeah go on. <laughs> give, give me one second i just double check my audio so so this is another very very crazy thing hello right. hello testing on my back I'm yeah yeah yeah. You're, you're, yeah yeah okay so the 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 word when they go into germany they um they they turn Odin, which is the all father, the 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 god for the Germans, well, into Odin. Mm -hmm. a, a demon, yeah, and they turn him into Satan as well, and he takes on those personifications, a trickster, a nasty outsider, a a, a, a creepy spirit in the forest of uh, of magic and deception and all this type of stuff, and then um, that's all very very weird stuff. But then of course there's a lot of like weird patterns with these type of things because these things are messy, um. If you study the Bible, you will see Yahweh is very specific. It's like, call me Yahweh. I am that I am. Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Don't don't call me any other bullshit name, you fucking idiot. Call me what my name is. I am spirit. I am being. I am real. Now, of course, okay. in Latin, the, the word God is Deus. Yes. That's what the Roman, the, the Greeks call it. Dios. Now, well, in Spanish, Dios, Dios. Yeah. Dios. Dios is the name Zeus. Zeus, Deus, Zeus. That's who it is. That's the name they're using. They're using Zeus's name. Is this actually now, in... true? Like that's where, literally yes. where they got the word from? It's not just... Well, yes, it's Zeus. Wow. It's Zeus, yeah. My, it's, like, it's my, the... and, and this is where it gets kind of crazy because the word God, okay. English is a Germanic language. The word God is, well, it's been proposed, comes from a derivative of the, the name um, Godin, which is the, I think, Lombard version of... Odin, Gordon, 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 oh. Odin, Gordon, God. And so, <laughs> oh so this is where you get this thing. Oh my you God. Go, <laughs> yes. Sorry. You, you go, you go over to Russia. Oh. I, I was with a girl in Russia and I was, I was like on a date with her and I was talking to her and she kept on saying, Bosch, Bosch, oh Bosch. I'm like, what the hell does Bosch mean? And she's like, that's God, God. So oh. Bosch, you look at who the, the pagan, one of the main pagan gods in, in Slavic religions, his name is Bosch. Or something like that, oh. and so all these th th all these things start to take this profound like unity among them. It's almost like uh, these things are just so unbelievably messy that people can't comprehend, and it's like it's like a psychedelic trip when you look at it. Like everything's just kind of flowing into each other. You you kind of don't know what you don't know where to stabilize yourself, and then you kind of understand why the Christians get so dogmatic is because you could spend probably a lifetime trying to put all this stuff together and making it all fit, or you could actually sit down and say, well, what's effective? fuck this pagan religion let's focus on jesus let's build an institution and block out anything that gets in the way and be dogmatic about it mm. and then they consolidate an ego and it leads to a dark age but then over that dark age the christian church becomes the light of knowledge it builds up power it builds up sophistication and it becomes actually quite a quite a profound tool in the end it's got some downsides it's got some unbelievable upsides mm -hmm. as nietzsche said what's the foundation like of western culture man and, and it, it set up the the stage for a lot of prosperity and a lot a lot of the people who were kind of complaining about like oh christianity blah, 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 blah. like the only reason you're even in a position to complain is because you're in a position yes. of privilege because of this it doesn't mean that yes. it's good well, necessarily or absolutely, but it's like just pay homage a little bit. Don't you know what I mean? It's like too much uh, just looking at the, the negatives of it and not like, hey, man, there was a lot of death and destruction and suffering and your, the shit that your ancestors had to go through for you to even be in this position. Just honor and, that shit. And there's some... There's some there's an unbelievably sophisticated uh, like it's there's so many good things about it that people throw out the window and and again this is coming from someone who could, as as i just walked through there i could completely destroy this religion if i want like well, that sounds arrogant but like i can kind of <laughs> you know play 
yeah, play yeah. around with it and show there's all these like weird things about it, if you know what I mean. I'm not coming at this from a dogmatist point of view. But for example, someone will pay me thousands of dollars to be their psychologist and work with them in that type of regard. Mm -hmm. and, and like, you know, that's how it works. And therapy is very famously a very expensive thing. And that's the sort of way you fix your mind. You know, you like, I've got a bad mind. I'll go to a therapist. I'll pay money for it. But right. of course, the Christian church set up a thing where they had confession for fucking free. Basically, it was you, you paid your taxes and you got confession. And so you would have free therapy with that. Now, that's an unbelievably beneficial thing. We live in a capitalist society, so everything's for sale. So you're probably not going to get stuff like that. Even, you know, the, the kind of talk of free healthcare and all that type of stuff. Like that's that's probably the best you're going to do. But you don't really want to be in that position, do you? Because then you're then you're like in a, in a psych ward or something like that. So the vast majority of people um, are going to have to pay for this stuff. Whereas in Christian Europe, Catholic Europe, they gave all that stuff out basically for free. They had a giant institution that worked mm. on this, the Catholic Church. Everybody went to confession. They opened up the first the university, the first public hospital. They, they opened up the first yes. orphan, orphanage. Yeah, there's a lot of hey, great and, things. That, like, a lot, and a lot of pioneering things, you know? Yeah. This is what's so crazy about it. They're also almost like the kind of left wing against the, the kings, because oh the kings God, would like. That's so true. The yeah, kings, yeah. The, king, the kings didn't like the peasants, because the peasants were just annoying people who like <laughs> fucking pissed them off. May I have and so some they'd more, exploit. Sir? Mm -hmm. they'd exploit them all the time and then the church would kind of be like no here you have to keep the peasants happy the peasants are like the gut bacteria of society so take care of the peasants and and we, it, everything will go out well so they'd be like the mediators right. and then also they were the, they were like did you ever talk to an artist who's a struggling artist yeah and sure. it's like i can't i can't make any money and so they have to do some shit job because they can't make any money imagine if if you were an artist back in the day and all you had to do was go to the church and they'd find a place for you if you had that type of skill Wow. And they'd feed you, they'd put you up, and you could dedicate yourself full time to your art. That'd that would be, awesome. be amazing. Yeah, that'd be incredible. That'd be, that'd be fucking. That's yeah. that's literally what the vast majority of artists want. But instead, what we're doing is we're trying to figure out Patreon and we're trying to figure out crypto and all these payment channels yeah. so that artists can can fund themselves because creativity is notoriously hard to fund. It's like there was never any problems in the past with that. If you were a creative spirit and you went to the church and you were willing to. It's, you kind of have to, you know, play the church line a bit, but hmm. it's, 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 it's like, it's not like it's any different nowadays. You can't like, you know, you kind of have to play, you have to create what the Hollywood executives want nowadays. Like it's the same thing. Yeah, man. And a lot of them kind of had to, a lot of these actors and producers and just everyone in, in a lot, most people in Hollywood have to bite their tongue and they can't really speak their, their mind and what they really think. You know, I, I was listening to a podcast with Matthew McConaughey on the Joe Rogan experience. And he was saying how like a lot of the, the actors who were there in the Oscars, who he's literally prayed with before dinner. And then Matthew, like kind of thank God or something, a part of his speech. And then you can see his friends like about to applaud and then kind of like sitting on their hands, sort of like hiding that they're kind of, they're kind of into it, you know, which is like, that's how yeah. crazy it's gone. Wait, just to yeah. go back on the, on the pagan thing, just for a, a moment, is there any pagan societies that have been successful long-term? I'm just curious. Oh, uh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Rome, bro. Rome, Rome was like on the cusp of probably hitting some s certain modern tech. It, it like Rome. Hmm. I, I don't know would it have done it, but like, they, you know, they were they were playing around with stuff like the steam engine. They were playing around with like steam power. Now, bro, the, when we oh. got steam engines, we got the Industrial Revolution. They were tinkering with stuff like that. They had incredibly – the idea of being a citizen, which is we understand is like the, the core of individualism, mm -hmm. is actually a Roman Greek idea. Oh, Greek really? and Roman paganism is unbelievably sophisticated. Yeah. It, like it, so, so all that Greek a, culture, like we we're talking about, like Aristotle and all these guys, would you consider that society pagan? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Well, pagan, pagan. See, pagan is like um, the word racist. That's literally like how you could understand that word was used in the past, um, because oh. like racist, racist is like very, very weaponized word and very, very strong word. And like if you get called racist, you're fucked, and and everyone's afraid of that word, you know. And it's very, very uh, like uh, weaponized in some sense. And pagan means like essentially. It's like saying someone who is outside, like outsider, um, un, un, unbeliever. Right. So, so it's not a specific group. It's just you're outside of this main group. Yeah. 
Right. Well, in Judaism, in Judaism, they have the concept of, uh, you know, like you're a Jew, you're, you're a member of the chosen race mm -hmm. and you're chosen by God. And then you have a Gentile and that's like a non-Jew. And that's like the same way as me saying like Irish and foreigner. It's like that type of thing. Right. Or, or in I, South America, they call the outside is gringo. You know, you're, gringo, you're, gringo, yeah. exactly. Hey, gringo. So gringo is Come here. gringo, gentile, foreigner. And then what eventually happens is that morphs into um, foreigners would have different religions. And then right. Christianity obviously strips itself from Judaism and then becomes it becomes very, very much ideological Christianity. Like it's a, it's a religion. And so the outsiders are now people who are unbelievers, like the infidels for the Muslims. Right. And so the oh. you would turn around and you would say you would call someone a, an outsider, an infidel, a pagan, a heathen, a Gentile. So, so then who, they, what, what would you call the what Greek culture? Like what religion is there a more specific oh, yeah. name for it then? Oh yes, yeah, so you well you would call it a, either Hellenic, the Hellenic religion. Okay. You would call it Hellenic philosophy Hellenic if you're talking Hellenic. about Plato. Okay. Now I just feel but, like um, a dick uh, saying pagan. Like ah, you're just an outsider. <laughs> but all right, thank you for <laughs> well, yeah. educating me. It's it's good. It's it's good. like I'm telling you one thing. I've got a video on my channel if anyone wants to look at it. When I think of pagan, like, I think of like kind of hippies praying to nature spirits in the forest. Like that's yeah. kind of yeah. The nothing yeah, wrong like, with it. I've done, I've been that hippie many times. Just, you know. and, and so this <laughs> this is it like um roman paganism was probably as sophisticated as as yeah like, actually it was probably more sophisticated in christianity at the start and and because it was a it was a more developed religion which like like what i'm trying to say christianity was like you take dmt your ego destroys and then you see jesus and then you spend like a year and a half trying to integrate that experience and at the end of it you finally articulated what happened to you OK, hmm. so that's like two years later, you pulled it together. Now, that's sort of what happens with religions. Rome has this energy, which is the the energy of, of war. And this causes them to create a civilization. So this is why they were led by Mars. That was their hmm. their their leading energy it was the god the of warrior. war. Yeah, and yeah, this, yeah. The warrior. And so they create this religion. And then over time, they develop this religion into something quite sophisticated. They marry it to Greece. And then they have a sort of very comprehensive and sophisticated theology. And Christianity grafted itself to that largely, like the word logos, which is what Christ was in the beginning. There was the logos. Yeah, that's a Greek word. Yeah, that comes yeah. from Greek. Greek orthodox. And, and that comes from yeah, the icon. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's a that's a huge deal, man. Like that's that's literally in some sense, some people believe that Christianity was like the extension of of Greek religion and philosophy and whatnot. Mm. And um, all these things are fascinating. Like they're really really interesting yeah, to look at because. That's why I want to learn more about uh, like Greek Orthodox and see like their, their perspective and go deeper yeah. into that. Yeah, hmm. yeah, it's it's really really cool stuff. But I guess maybe just to close then because I don't uh, I don't burn the years too much more of ranting about Rome and all that type of stuff. <laughs> like the the, the kind of the, the yeah. neuroscience behind all this stuff is um, just to kind of back this up with some comprehension of of what's what happens with ego death. Yeah, yeah. And um, you have a left brain and a right brain, as I often talk about. I recommend people look at my video called left brain and right brain, the psychology of ego death. If you want to see me actually comprehensively talk about this and, and it, it shows quite clearly that your brain's divided into half. Mm -hmm. And one of them is like the updater who, who allows you to see the, the true vision of reality. And then the other side, the left brain is like the conscious ego, right. which allows you to consolidate a plan. And the way that our minds are designed, and it's so interesting because we're divided into two. So you, you literally have two people inside your head and one of them is unconscious, like Jung's unconscious. That's the right brain. The other is conscious, like the left brain. And so the way that you go about life is that you make a plan. It's actually different. You observe the world and you, you see what you need to do. And then you make a plan and then you go and try to do the thing. And then if you fail, your plan dies. And so you go back to observing the world and then you make a new plan. And then you go and do that thing. And what this division of labor seems to have been done is that you have this right brain, which is like this, almost like this general in a war that can see the world very almost like a drug, like a, like a DMT trip, perceives reality and can give messages to the left brain and say, like with urges and the conscience and all that, mm. go, go eat the cake. And then your left brain says, OK, I'm going to make a, a, a plan to eat the cake. And this creates an ego creates a worldview, creates a perspective. It, it deletes out all the, 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 the non-cake things, the Gentile things, and it focuses only on the cake. 
and then it consolidates an ego towards that cake and it runs in, towards it and gets it. And then after a while, that might go wrong. You might get fat or something like that. And then there's a crisis. And then the right brain comes back online and destroys the ego, shakes it up, freaks it out, says, no, you're no longer in control and takes control back off it and reinterprets what's going on and then constructs a new ego to set a new plan. And this is a very, very basic thing. You, you'll understand if you take psychedelics, you'll have these massive ego debts. In this regard, you'll notice yourself having to reorientate yourself, put yourself back together. Mm -hmm. And so the experience the experience of, um, of that in a personal level is very familiar to everybody. And there's very, very firm psychology underneath it. And all I'm really doing in this talk is scaling that to the idea of civilizations to try to figure out what might be going on. And so in some sense, what you do see is that um, – these these guys Rom, Romulus and Ramus they 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 perceive the world and they realize war is what wins in this world and mm -hmm. so they consolidate an ego around Mars who's a war god and then that actually works and it creates Rome one of the most sophisticated civilizations of all time and then the right brain comes online the 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 young conscious the the other side comes online and out out of it comes Jesus which is this new vision of how things work and it completely destroys Rome's ego the left brain and it, mm. it, it 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 falls apart rome collapses because when your left brain's not working you're not effective in the world you become introverted and depressed and it all falls apart right and in rome's like because you, you need floor. boundaries to like on a day-to-day -day basis it's kind of like trying to plant a, a plant and not put it in a pot or not put fences around it eventually all these you know it's not going to yeah. grow properly or maybe some ant wildlife can come in and eat it apart what so. you said hmm Hundred percent. Is that is, so that, is like, that related to the default mode network? Because I know that a lot of scientific studies on psychedelics show that it decreases activity in the default default mode network, which certain neuroscientists would refer that to the to the ego. I don't I don't know about that, but that's what uh, Calvin Harris or something like that. I, I might begin the name wrong, but it's interesting how it decreases the activity in the brain, so that way. And then the brain kind of just lights up like a Christmas tree, pretty much. Yeah, it, it's a it's a weird one. I'm like I'm not too good on the default mode network, but the default mm. mode network almost looks like you're daydreaming thoughts, as far as I understand, mm. and you're kind of inner inner monologue when you're by yourself. It looks like stuff like this. So when you're kind of sitting down there and you're kind of bored, and like me and you are talking right now, but when um, we stop talking. We'll kind of walk around and then chatter. I'll be talking to myself and being like, oh, Tom's a nice dude. All right. I wonder, wonder what's going on in Australia. Yeah. I wonder what's this. Oh, is that a pagan? And like Bug. throw a dart at them. So, <laughs> um, so, so I believe. I'm not sure if that's the case, but so I believe. I think something like that goes on. But these brain hemispheres, they're very – it's very well studied. It's probably one of the most stable things I've seen in neuroscience. And mm -hmm. um, So I can guarantee you that this pattern I'm talking about happens. And as I said, look up that video, Left Brain, Right Brain, Psychology of Ego Death, if you want to see me cover this more comprehensively. It is nuts, some of the connotations of this. Um, but it, we're talking about this purely in a civilizational perspective. Mm. Okay? And where does – uh, Satan come into all this in terms of the, the collective. <laughs> was, <laughs> what, was, well, so, so what was Carl Jung's perspective on, on Satan? Was he an autonomous dark force in the collective unconscious or is he a part of the self? Is he just the flip side of Christ? What's going on here? So so that's I guess that's a really, really good thing to talk about ions then because ions means the word era. And you can think of the word era as like um, uh, an ego. Okay. So Rome, Rome's era was when their ego was intact and they were winning and their worldview was existing. And so Rome's perspective on Mars held predominance and that was the era of Rome and that was the ego of Rome. And then at the end of that era, Christianity comes in like the right brain coming in and dissolves the ego of Rome and consolidates a new ego. And that becomes the era of Christianity. And that's mm. an era of Christianity winning as the ego. It, it rises up and it becomes predominant and it wins and all that stuff. And now we're coming through the experience of the right brain coming back in and dissolving all that type of stuff. And a new ego is getting formed. A new era is coming. A new um, personification. And each of these eras actually comes along with uh, ruling people. So, for example, the Romans were ruled by the Romans. Then the Germans came in and established the, the European aristocracy which is the Christian aristocracy, who are a load of Germanics, and they're all related. And what happened literally only 100 years ago, they all lost their power. And then what we have now is the ascendancy, essentially of like 
techno technological industrialists and they're establishing the new <laughs> the new order of the world that type of thing new world order. And, and i know yeah. that, and i know it's it's very taboo i know it's very taboo but but that's actually like legitimately what's happening i know people want like they're scared of that they're scared of the, the sort of idea that there's like changes in powers and all this but this is history like we we are living through the sort of end of rome era and mm. it's the transition from the roman kings to the german kings and it seems like something like this is going on again and so this new era, and this is the question, and this is a very hard question. What is going to be the nature of this new era? What is going to be the the, the nature of this? Because if you could have understood Christianity back in the Roman times, you would have been able to predict how the next thousand years would have gone. Mm. You would have been able to say to yourself, okay, Rome's going to collapse. Christianity is going to take over. Everything's going to become dogmatic. Everything's going to become very, very strict and by the book. Monasteries have become a thing. And it's probably best to try get in line with these Germans, hang out with these Germans and sort of do the Christianity with them and, and, and maybe figure stuff like this out. For example, the, the city Venice was a lot of people who fled Rome and built a strong point where they could um, establish stability to stop uh, – stop them getting invaded and then they ended up having a very successful civilization and um, regardless of that what what you sort of see going on now is a similar set of transitions like the world is getting reshaped literally as we speak it looks like mm. it, it seems we're, we're at a crossroads as well because it can go either, either way like a really overwhelmingly dark new society or a light one it's kind of depends on what we choose to do at this point because like would you would you agree that there are certain let's say anti-human anti-god kind of movement that's trying to inject into yes, humanity hmm. so so nietzsche would critique christianity by saying that christianity was anti-pagan in the sense of it was anti um instinct and anti-life it was very mm. it was very against the roman perspective which was very very as nietzsche would describe like energetic and animated and will to power christianity right. was like a reaction against that and so you could look at Christianity is like anti-Roman in some sense, although it's not necessarily true, but it's anti it, used, it, it was at one point. <laughs> yeah. And and it, it, it kind of forms Christianity is very in the head, very spiritual. And this is this is a good thing in some ways and a very bad thing in others. It's mm -hmm. a it's a like, you know, every nothing's black and white. Everything's got sides to it. Exactly. And so what the anti anti Christ is, is like the reaction against Christianity as it's manifesting. And so this is a very, very fascinating thing. So Jung studies this and he realizes that, well, the Antichrist is going to lead us to something the opposite of Christian first principles. So one first principle of Christianity is the spiritual reality, the mm -hmm. world as uh, a special place. It's going to Christianity proposes that you have a soul and that is special. And mm -hmm. That is something that you can work with. Christianity proposes um, very things. morality, about, God. These the, are heavy topics. The idea of. Yeah the idea of morality the idea that there's there's right and wrong there's boundaries these things all kind of appear in some sense now what is quite anti-christian and and is the idea of there's the material reality only i'm sure you've heard that before mm -hmm. the idea that and that universe... this idea has been around for a very long time because i i know that uh, there are a few atheists who think that this is like just the the natural progression of humanity but ever since humans have been able to think this idea has been yes. around it's nothing new it's nothing new. And so the way you could think about it is that, yes, it, this, these ideas have been around extensively. And all that's happening now is we're consolidating an ego mm. that's focusing on the cake. But the cake is materialism. Whereas right. Christianity consolidated an ego that focused on, for example, the, the icing, which is the spiritual side of things. And they the, the both maybe they both made the mistake of saying, all right, all that exists is the icing or the atheists say all that exists is the cake. In reality, both of them are probably together in flux. And this right. is probably what Jesus is trying to tell you. But this is that's so complicated that people just aren't able to handle this. Or episode. you can even go as far that's, to say it's the, the chef and the cake, right? The materialist is boom. saying that, hey, man, this cake just so happened to be there's no chef don't be ridiculous that's yes, just the flying yes. spaghetti so, monster <laughs> yeah and 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 this is the thing and so it's 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 like a blocking out of reality it's a focus it's an ego it's a it's a set right. of first, first like it principles. looks at matter and, so, and atoms and just what you can see with our sense data yes and and this actually pairs with what we see in a human because then a human is no longer something with creative a creative spirit a human mm. is instead uh we're just animals uh, a, right 
not even no not even animals so you have creative spirits as well it's not even that it's like humans are oh. are literally lumps of matter <laughs> lumps of uh, no yeah no nah, joke, I, I, I know that's why i'm laughing <laughs> they're they're yeah. like uh, th- machines that we can rearrange and then actually what wow. you're seeing quite a lot of the socialist projects there's no like, free will example, right in in this paradigm for for the most part there's no it's we're all deterministic well, they're, they're, machines basically biological machines that just act yes, on instinct and, and we just want to chase pleasure and run away from pain ultimately and that's that's it and a lot of the socialist um, societies like Mao's China um, specifically focus on this idea that man is something that you can craft into what you need him to be. Mm. Man becomes like, a, 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 as we said, a machine that you can hammer into shape. Right. And, so, and it's not completely right? untrue because you definitely can for those who, ha- yes. who don't have the will and who would just kind of just accept their environment. Yes, yeah. But yeah, anyways... <laughs> Yes, well, that that's the example, and so the the, the kind of perspective goes from, um, you you could say this idea from the Catholic Church, which is that you sit down, you take all these people, despite all the Catholic Church's flaws and its dogma and its annoyance in that regard, and kind of just the 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 weirdness of some of the the parts of it, they come with the idea that like the people are like gut bacteria in the belly, and that you need if the people shine then a lot of creativity comes out of them. And then everybody in society, the elites will be happy. Everybody will be happy mm. because the people are healthy. This type of idea. That's that's kind of a generalized take. And what you see in this perspective is that the people are a mob of useless eating machines that need to be hammered into order towards the sort of super society that we need. Mm-hmm. There's almost like you're trying to coordinate a beehive. And so these people, these bees, no longer have any real value. They're just like minor digits that you kind of put into place. And so it's like what Stalin said, one death is a tragedy, a million is a statistic, this type of idea. Wow. And um, this is the sort of ascension of that sort of antichrist mindset in that um, you take the perspective that you think big, you think broad, you focus on the machine, you focus on the big blob of matter. And the universe itself becomes a machine. If you think about the worldview of, of atheism, which is our modern scientific right, right. world. Like there's no spirit behind like a tree or a rock. Or, or the, it's not a being. It's just whatever. It's just a bunch that, of atoms. That's, actually, that's literally it. You, you, don't, you don't look at the universe and think to yourself, there's, there's, a, a, there's a living God behind, out there somewhere or up there somewhere or manifest right. within this. You, you think of it like a giant clock that is just rolling out all throughout the endless ions of time mm. with no order or place or purpose, just a sort of functioning mechanical machine, like a computer running programs without any consciousness or anything and, like that. I'm just trying to understand something because uh, I'm, I'm actually inviting a, quite a, a famous atheist. I don't want to jinx it by saying the name right here, but it, it will happen because I want to get different perspectives on this. But I'm trying to understand how you can subscribe to moral relativism, but then under the same breath, start preaching what's objectively wrong and right like yes well this how is, does that this is I'm, I'm actually i'm genuinely asking like how how does this reconcile this is it's it's it's, it's down to the psycholo- psychological principles i'm talking about here okay it's, it's 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 all it's very very obvious when you study the psychology it's very very obvious when you study the psychology and now no atheist will ever be able to answer this because most people aren't aware no, because they psychology- the words that they're speaking it's moral relativity but their actions and their whole being acts as if it is real so it's like there's a yes. clear contradiction with what you're saying and the actual reality of it that's what that's something that i've personally noticed yes and yes. not all I mean, atheists by the way are moral relativists because i know that sam harris is uh, he believes in the moral landscape i, I don't want to straw man his argument but he does believe in some sort well, of an objective moral He's a good Whoa. example to actually rep- represent this idea of um, the sort of antichrist perspective in some sense, because, um, yeah, and again, this idea of unconscious f- ideas, unconscious biases, <clears throat> right? It's it's like if you were in Christianity, you could kill a pagan, and that's it's not very Christian to kill people, is it? Not at all. No, no, not it's, at all. It's but against could, the commandments. Could, Don't. But they they killed plenty of pagans they killed a huge amount of of europeans but you could argue that that wasn't christian that was certain people using the guise of christianity to kill people 
but the fact yes, that you're yes. killing pagan it already it by your actions you're not a christian period uh yes but yeah yes but 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 to them and like you you could sit down and you could be like that's incredibly hypocritical and in some sense it is but in another sense it's not because these people are trying to establish as i said a new ego a mm. new perspective a new religion a new religious worldview the christian worldview and it's going to come out in the long term it's going to be a good thing in the sense of like something like the catholic church being a very profound and established institution right. that was very and, healthy and maybe from some your... perspectives you could like some people truly did believe that certain people were doing these demonic rituals and kind of invoking spirits and then and killing their families and disrupting society so maybe if you believe that's to be the case, yeah, I, I can I could see psychologically how you could justify killing people. Yes, I, and, and and see, this is the most important. Not saying it's justified, is, is, just, would, but yeah, I could see why. I, I would I would I wouldn't even think in terms of justify because it's, it's more like you you must think in terms of the instincts and um, right. the instinct for you is that you want you want everybody you want you want to have your tribe and mm -hmm. you want to feel that your tribe is going to win and the win is going to be achieving the kingdom of heaven which is your society hmm. that's what you want to feel you want to feel like me and you are going and we're going to we're going to own the future that's the fundamental psychological hmm. feeling inside the the spirit of man then is why not you... why not convert them then instead of just and, going straight and for so the this kill? is this is how it would work is i'd walk into christian europe okay. and i'd say convert to christianity and then these native pagans that would be like me walking into you and being like convert to radical atheism you know <laughs> And you're just going to be like, no, no bro, I'm not going to do that. How dare you? <laughs> and then, and then what they do is like, are you, are you a fucking racist, demonic, um, anti-science, gay-hating fascist? Is oh, that what shit. you are? And you'd be like, no, that's not true at all. And it's like, well, then convert to atheism. And then you'd be like, no, wait a second, um, but I'm, I'm not an atheist. And they'd be like, you're going to, you're getting fucking censored. You're getting, you're getting killed. Uh... You're, you're going onto the fucking public stage. And it's not, it's not that these, these people aren't coming in in the sense of like, you, they're not, they're not trying to have an argument with you. They're not, they're not, they're, they, they are part of a tribe yeah, yeah. and they feel, they want to feel like, you know, they want to win. They want to own the future. Like so everybody. True. Well, it's like these debates, so man. Cause I went down a deep, deep rabbit hole hundreds of hours watching atheists versus Christian versus Muslim versus this versus that. And it's most of them. It's really hard to find someone who's actually intellectually honest and genuinely trying to understand the, the other side. It's always like yeah. from a stage of I'm going to win this. This is why you're wrong. This is why I'm right. And it's always like this kind of warrior yeah. mentality of like winning and losing and not genuinely actually trying to understand the other perspective, which I find it very hard oh, to yeah. come across. There are there are out there, but it's very rare, man. Very rare. And and this is this is just reality of human psychology. Cognitive dissonance is mm -hmm. tied to the same part of your mind that believes in God. Mm hmm. That's weird, isn't it? it the is. part of your mind that. Uh, no, and here's another lovely red pill. You can get magnets. You can turn off something called, I think it's the uh, uh, posterior uh, something cortex. And you put magnets on it and people will stop believing in God and they'll have a positive attitude towards foreigners, which is the positive attitude towards Gentiles, which is the positive attitude towards pagans. No way. You, you this take, is actually a study. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can check it out. And you take the magnet off, what? and you you build up this person's sense of um, of God and whatnot, and they will start to obviously believe in God more, and they'll get a vision. So, what does God mean? God means my tribe, the spirit of my tribe, and we are going to own the future. We're going to win. We're going to take the future. Right. And all those other people who don't believe me are outside my thing. They're enemies. They're against me. Morality is also wrapped up into this stuff as well. Yeah. And so when you sit down and you talk to someone about religion, you're psychologically wasting your time because the person is in a tribe and you're sitting down and you're trying to have you're trying to talk to them about reason. You're, you're, you're an idiot. Like, why would you do that? These people are in a tribe and their tribe, they, their instincts want their tribe to win, which is so healthy and normal and fine. And it's okay. And when an atheist sits down with you and a Muslim sits down with you, and both of them basically have the same energy inside of them, they both want to win. It's, it's fine. It's like, a, it's like a kid who wants to win at sports. Like mm. it's absolutely fine. It's normal and healthy. And, and I would just advise people who get into this stuff, like, don't yeah. waste your time with it because you're going to come up with people who aren't using rationality because there's no point. Because in, in reality, you don't even need rationality to win. Mm. And these the people who are, are swar swarming into um, the atheists who are basically taking over the culture right now, um, 
they're not reason they're not rational they're not make they don't make sense they're mm. completely hypocritical but, but they think matter. that they're rational that's the the trick and we're all and, and that's the thing we're we're all subjected to human folly we're all subjected to co yeah. cognitive dissonance confirmation bias yes. and yeah it's just it's always like the same yeah. hypocritical patterns from both sides but they're blind and, and so th to it and so so this is precisely it is that there's this um complete blindness to to how how silly people can be um but there's also tied to this as well that like that cognitive dissonance that energy all is wrapped up to this idea of like where our tribe is going to win all this stuff going down and then you asked me at the start like how how to interpret people like sam harris and and people like atheists and all this type of stuff and that's the key the key is to understand what's their vision for the future mm. what society do they want to achieve and when you sit down with sam harris jordan peterson did this and they had this big long wasteful two-hour discussion but sam harris would never at any point ever challenge his first principle which is that society should be based on the ultimate amount of well-being for everybody mm. now if now if you really want to have a deep conversation about someone with someone you would get you try to dig down to these things you ignore all the arguments about is it right to oppress gay people or is it right to <laughs> is it right to like dress a certain way and all this type of stuff you ignore all that stuff because that's just talking about like topics and, and not changing the fundamentals. But if you dig down to someone's vision for the future and what tribe they bring a part of, then you'll have a real conversation. Mm. And you'll find it very hard to get people to talk about that stuff. For example, with Sam Harris, what you would have to say to him is like, why is well-being for everybody valuable? And Jordan Peterson did this, and Sam Harris just ignored it completely. Mm. He just bounced straight off the topic. But if you hold him to that, you start to get somewhere where basically Nietzsche went, which is like, why is this the valuable vision for the future? And even you, and I will find it hard to argue against this because it's a scary problem because that's a very, very big thing mm. to question against. This is something that you, like our society has been stuck in since the Enlightenment is that we assume that um, it's called utilitarianism. The vision for the future is that everybody gets a fair share. Everybody gets equality. Everybody gets help. Everybody right. gets treated equally. Kind of like and basic that's exactly universal income. Like that's where that comes in. Yeah. And that's ex exactly the ideology at the foundation of the Marxist utopia, at the foundation of the French Revolution, at the foundation of every single democracy, at the foundation of all our modern societies, and at the foundation of what you see going on with all the atheists. That's the thing at the root of it. And that's tied to the very anti-Christian idea of um, moral relativism, as people mm. say, because if everything is equal and everybody is tolerant and all religions are equally shared and all that type of stuff, that's what we understand as relativism. Relativism. It's this radical openness to everything. And if you wanted to actually challenge people on a religious level and have that conversation, you'd be poking at this stuff. But I guarantee you, if you do this, you will you will literally get the the most hardcore pushback of your life because this is precisely where the rubber hits the road this is where you're challenging right. the religious principles of an entire civilization you try tell someone that equality is not a first principle you try tell someone like that that what about inequality being like this is what nietzsche did imagine if inequality was more valuable than equality imagine that yeah. how would that work what would that be and that's just so beyond our paradigm that that would shock most people and so um all this stuff sounds very intense but it's it's like the same thing is is um it, that that idea of like inequality is is related to for example the idea of god god chooses some people who are better than others based on the fact that they act more in alignment with god's principles than others and they are inequally superior and you try tell someone that's real and they will freak out at you. You try, and, and then even mm -hmm. if you want to put this in a more atheist, atheistic perspective, uh, try tell people that. self sort of thing. Because I feel like that, I'm, yeah. I'm speaking from the Chilean culture because this is something that I feel like I can speak about. I've grown up with it my whole life. I've been there so many times. It's embedded in me. So I, can, I do feel like I can kind of speak about this. And in the Chilean culture, especially what's going on now, and what I see is that it's a lack of self-responsibility. It's a lot of kids, kind of spoiled kids who live with their mums complaining about the world, but they're like Jordan Peterson, like, but their room's a mess. They can't even get their own shit in order, but then they, they want to tear down the system. They want to abolish cops. They want to abolish the government. They want to, yeah. they want to yeah. just take like, and, but I get that some, I get the inequality thing, but it's always like, it's like a bell curve. It's not a straight line, is it? So it depends. If you go too far one end, then it becomes problematic. So it depends on where you well, are, of course. See, 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 that mindset is tied to Sam Harris's entire worldview. 
Because if you say that well-being is matters, then what people think is that my feeling of comfort inside my body is sacred. Mm. And when I don't feel good in my body, there's someone. There's I have to blame something. That's anti-stoic. You know? How dare you? Yes, I'm offended. And and and, and sto- <laughs> stoicism is essentially essentially like fascism. That's basically what it is. Stoicism says wow. basically shut shut the fuck up and deal with your feelings. Stop, <laughs> yeah, being, a, yeah, stop yeah. being a bitch. And sometimes and that that's... can go too far, of course, because in Australia that's like really hardcore here. But to the point where it's like sometimes you can go into a place where you're suffering so much, you're depressed, you're suicidal, and then your friends just say, "Shut the fuck up, harden harden the fuck up." <laughs> no, they'll say, "Eat some cement, mate, and harden the fuck up." Right. And of course, in certain situations, it can be terrible, man. This can kind of, you, you, rep- you repress that feminine emotional aspect of yourself and just let it bubble up until you explode. But of course, there are certain times, like if you're like a spoiled high chair tyrant kind of brat, then yeah, maybe that, that advice could work re- very well. It's like, well, shut see, up. see, this is where Stop complaining. this is where things <laughs> this is where things like Christianity are so powerful because they actually solve both of those problems in one because Christ mm. is the guy who has the worst thing of all happen to him, but he shuts the fuck up and does it. But wow. he also he also does it for you. So you don't feel so bad about the fact that it's happening to you and you feel loved because that's what most people are looking for. Fundamentally, they don't feel loved. And that's why they give out about people telling them to shut the fuck up is because they feel alone and isolated in their pain. Whereas Christ says, I'm actually with you in your pain. And wow. therefore you can actually fight and be stoic, but still also be loved. So you get both things that you can't get from the world that's around really profound. you. I didn't, I didn't think about it that way. Wow. Yeah. It's so genius. It's so genius. Like to the point where you have to kind of think, did God maybe come down on earth and tell us that to give us a hand there? Because that's a very good day. Yeah, because we can just say okay. like, oh, it's easy for you, God, to tell us to do the right thing. It's like, dude, I came in the human flesh and suffered the worst death possible. So yeah, shut the fuck up <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very, very nuts. And it's very, very nuts. And, and that's for an example, like that's a very difficult thing for modern people to comprehend as a first principle, because yeah. that's what you'd need to bring someone like Sam Harris or Richard Dawkins down to is, is you'd need to get them to challenge the idea that, first of all, well-being is valuable and your feelings are, are valuable and, and all these type of things. And you, you need to wrestle with this yeah. stuff. And, and, and it's it is. So, it's, it's just not the end game, though, because if that's if yeah. that's all we go to, of like, oh, my feelings are more important than reality. Well, we don't have to go on that road on how destructive that can be if you if that's your number one goal in life you know that's that's pretty much it dude it's pretty much it and it's 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 a uh, it's a fascinating thing and again like again it does all oscillate around ego goal as as i said your ego consolidates around your idea of who's my tribe who am i and what's my goal what's mm. my, how am i going to own the future and then you become closed off to stuff. And then if you try to go for that future and you fail, you'll have an ego death. If you take a fucking shitload of DMT, you'll have an ego death. <laughs> or sometimes if you just get depressed, you'll have an ego death. And then that will make yeah. you fall apart and then put that stuff back together. And perhaps in some sense, we're going through a collective ego death. I think that is uh, my thesis for today. I'm not sure if you want to keep on going on, but I wow. think that's that's a pretty decent place. To go. Yeah, man, I, I agree. That. <sighs> We can continue this conversation another time. I'm sure there's a lot of <laughs> doors that we've opened. I'm sure some people got triggered of something that I said. Uh, yeah, and, I, and I do yeah. apologize for that. I'm just, yeah, I don't even know what I'm apologizing for. But because uh, yeah, uh, sometimes I speak out of my ass, you know, and I'm just like, <laughs> right, because right now I'm like just getting into these kind of, well, especially Christianity. So if I do sound like I'm just speaking out of ignorance, well, it's because I am. I'm exploring. I'm not kind of, I'm not speaking from a place of authority. Uh, if I'm if I'm if I'm very confident about certain subjects, I will say so. But there are certain things that I'm just trying to explore and understand different worldviews. Yeah, I think I think just generally speaking, I would always advise people to see. This is probably going to be the hard thing because it's a lot of what we're going to have to do is kind of get a grip on um, the meaning of what we're going to have to get a grip is the meaning of psychology. What psychology means for all this type of stuff, mm. and that stuff is hard. That's going to be a hard problem. Like, how do you get people to understand how much your psychology influences things when your psychology is geared towards not not wanting you to understand how much psychology influences it? Your psychology is geared towards getting you to win, not getting you to understand the truth. And and this is this is the big issue. Yeah, and that's part of the shadow work as well. Is like f- feeling what triggers you inside. Like, what kind of worldviews? What certain thought leaders? really piss you off to your core where you just want to go to your keyboard and write an essay on why they're wrong 
uh, something useful that I find for myself when I'm going too far, like against the atheist sort of thing, the materialist view, I'll have to kind of recalibrate my brain and you know what, I'm going to watch a few hours of their view and kind of balance my view a little bit and try to understand their, their point of view, you know? Well, so this is, I guess, the kind of, and this is a very dangerous perspective, but this is the kind of <laughs> way you could look at all this type of stuff is if you wanted to do some of the ultimate shadow work, you'd sit down yourself and say to yourself, what do I want to do to win? What's my winning condition? What okay. future do I want to seize? And what do I see as my tribe? And actually inspect that in some type of level of depth and clarity and ask yourself, what are a variety of different ways I could see this? And um, the, I think the more people get clear on this, I think the easier it will be to have conversations. I don't expect people to get clear on this, but but that would be sort of the direction I go with that. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I, I think we should learn to talk to people that even if we don't agree with and just still have a good conversation, you know, I think we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're too polarized <laughs> in this society, yeah. you know, so it's good to kind of recalibrate. Yeah. But anyways, I'm saying this, but I, I probably get triggered sometimes. I, that's why I got to kind of remind myself of these things from time Wait, to time. Mob, mobs, mobs of boils saying yeah. Australia was delaying the S will come get Australia. That's what's going to be next. So yeah, exactly. The kang the kangaroos, man. That's, that's, that's the one I'm waiting for. So yeah. All right. Good. St- awesome, man. Yeah. Stuff, thanks. Man. Yeah. Thanks for coming on, man. Uh, just for people listening at home who want to connect with you and check out your channel. Do you want to plug anything? Give me some links and I'll oh, yes. put it in the show notes. Sweet. Sweet. So just drop it on, do you know, a good link. I'll put down, um, the left brain, right brain, the psychology of ego death. We'll drop that yeah. down in the link in the description. If you want to do that, pop in. That's a good one, by the way. I've seen that video. Okay. So okay. good job, boy. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for having me on again. We must have you on and have a discussion about some of your, your experiences. And um, I think that's everything, dude. Yeah, man. That's it. Awesome. I'll have a good one, bro. And I'll, I'll catch you next time. And we'll continue this crazy odyssey of a conversation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, dear. Brilliant, brother. Thank you. I'll talk to you later, sir. All right, man. Catch you later. Bye.